Hi everyone, this is a game called Circus Maximus by Jeffrey D. Ollers and it's by Pegasus Spieler. It comes in tin. First game by Pegasus Spieler in tin. And as you can see, you're trying to give away or sell some tickets to some famous attractions in the second century of, uh, of Rome, basically. It takes about 75 minutes. Um, I've only played it about 75 minutes so far. Uh, three to five players and it says age 10 plus. Not too high on the complexity scale. Board Game Geek's currently got it in about two. So as you know, that scale's kind of a Richter scale and goes up to five. And comes a nice little insert here, which clips almost like into place. So this is how you are going to set the game up. You are going to start off at Caesar's Villa. We do not need that card too much. Uh, we're going to play it right at the top. Okay, so that's there. We're going to have the Forum Romanum underneath. Then in any order you like, you can have Circus Maximus, the Pompeius Theatre and the Colosseum. That goes in that uh, orientation. Start Spieler goes here. And then you just need cards relevant to who's playing. So we are going to set this up as a four player game. And um, if you're playing it with a three, then you're going to take out a set of these favour cards in one moment in time. So here are the other cards. I'm just going to quickly uh, mute my phone a moment. It's not ringing or anything, but I don't want it to be ringing. And what you're doing is you're using those cards to basically dictate um, the value of you trying to bid these cards. I'll tell you right now, apologies for knocking that. This game is a kind of knitzia like It came out in 2008 and has a lovely kind of traditional, nostalgic almost board game feel of the modern board game era. So here we have, as an example, four sets. Fifth set, red, just so you can see the difference is here. Caesar, you play an advanced variant, which I won't be talking about today. Those will go away. We now have a look at here. We are going to have tickets and stuff like that. So based on the number of players times two, you're going to take out the amount of tickets. And we're just going to pop them out for a second. Imagine these are shuffled. One, two, three, four, five, six. Grab two more. Seven, eight. This is game played over three rounds. High score wins. So let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. We're going to now lay them out based on the type. So we've got Circus Maximus in sort of pink, salmon pink, red, coral colour. I don't know why coral is that kind of colour. And you have the log, which basically means the closest area, costs the most. So you're trying to sell this for the most money. You have the parquet, which is the middle in ground. And then you have the rang, which is like at the top of the Colosseum or whatever. And it's a bit further away, so you're selling it for a cheaper price. So now you're just going to just sort of overlay them a bit like this. I think you don't need too much space. And you don't really need these cards for the time being, but you just are aware of the colours. Different iconography in all of them, uh, all with shadows as well, which you might pick up on, which I think is very cool. Very nice big cards. I think it's about 270 gram, I'd guess. Um, and then, so these would go here. Ooh. And then you can have two here. So different variety, obviously, is just what came out. We're going to have these guys. So these are basically spectators or people who are maybe interested in visiting these locations. So uh, we're going to take out two or the amount of tickets minus one. So there's always a competing element. So let me just put the lid on this and then you can uh, have the game in shot. Whoopsie. So do that again. And we have one goes here. We have a student and this person is wearing a bag. If you've seen the film Full Metal Jacket, you might get a reference to uh, some of this. So that goes there, wearing sort of sneakers or trainers. We're going to have three for the Colosseum. So we have the Vaseline, the Vaseline, and the Senator. We're now going to have two, uh, so it's two minus one is going to go here. So it's a Legionnaire. And yeah, there's nothing else on there. But I think there are some other ones. We have the tourists and yeah, different kind of characters that could come up. So that's going to be one round. So I'll just be showing the majority of one round. And there's something that happens in round twos and threes, which I'll come on to in a moment. That is for two and three, this stuff here. So what do we do now? We now need to be looking at, as you can see, lots of different tickets, lots of different people. And we're now going to go into this phase, which is 
drawing out amount of cards equal to number of players. So we're playing at four player. We're going to grab four of these cards. This is basically special abilities. So we're all different traders in the second century of Rome after Christ and before, you know, religion takes off, you know, they want to be entertained and we are competing tradespeople with abilities. When you get one of these cards, if you happen to get one, you get to keep it for the entire game. If you don't spend it, you get the coin value at the bottom. Coins equal money equals points. What this lets you do, as an example, it basically lets you play a card again. So you could try and get something like this. You could do something like this, uh, which basically allows you to get two tickets instead of one, something like that. This one lets you, if you get a Legionnaire, you're going to get six coins rather than two. They're always worth two for the type of things that they are. So it's worth going for something like that. I've won the game a couple of times going for that kind of card. If you don't use it, it's worth two at the end. And similarly, it can basically get let you get additional cards. Lots of different cards in here. And even though the text on the card is in German, it's not difficult. There's um, only about eight different things. You can leapfrog over someone else's position. You can buy something else. It's, this, I don't know, eight different things. I think there's nine different events, a favor card, that's what it is. So three and then four. Okay, now what you're doing is starting the start player. You're thinking about bidding for a card. So I could say I'm going to bid a five. So you've got the first two. I've got no costs at the end of the game. If you haven't spent it at the end of each round, you're going to get that coin value or points value. You've got three on uh, one coin and two on two and one on three, uh, three. So I'm going to put this card here. Everyone else goes around. Some puts in a six, someone else puts in a five. They, so the six would go here, the five goes here, which is me. Another five comes along and they'll have to go next to me because I was the first person that breaks ties with the five. And finally, someone with like a four might go further along. A fifth card could be played. Someone might be like, oh, it's back to me again. I'm just going to chuck that card down. And unless somebody chucks in a two, I'm guaranteed to take that fifth card. So if I've chucked down, uh, every other person's played a card, I've played that, and then suddenly, um, so let's just say this person played a six, and this person played a, I don't know, played a two. So now I'm thinking, okay, so I'm not going to get the first card pick. Um, this person then goes there, say. So then I've played my, I played this, I played that one. Um, this person went. The final colour, the fourth colour, which we had was red. And we also had one other colour in play, which was... Uh, one, two, three. No, everyone's played. Let me just see which colours we've got going on. Purple. So blue would have gone here. And then I would have gone here. So what's happening is green gets first pick. They look through those cards, see what they want to do and take it. Then I'll take my pick. All the cards remain. Yellow gets their choice. Blue takes one of the last two remaining cards, then I'll probably take the starts playing to the start spieler, which basically means you get first pick from now on, unless someone takes it off you. So I move on to phase two, which is from your remaining cards, you're going to try and pick something here. So I've still got like my six, so I could go first, remember I took the start playing card. So you take all these, they go face down in your hand. These cards I always leave face up, you know, literally on, on the table in front of me because. Everyone should be able to work out what I've taken, and it's easier for me to try and work that too. So I might want to try and get a three-pointer card here for Circus Maximus. Why? Well, I need to have that ticket if I want to be enticing this student. So I might spend a six, say, so I might go first. And if no one goes higher than me, I get first pick, which means I've lost two points, but I've gained three which then means that I could then start considering getting a student. Somebody else though might spend a one and manage to get this card. It costs them nothing because a one and a two are worth no points lost at the end of each round. They would gain a net difference of two and they could be competing for this, but suddenly they might have a seven. So if they play the seven, they'll beat me to getting this card and I'll end up with nothing. So I've got a ticket and I won't get any points for it because I haven't satisfied the need of the person going. This game might be easy to explain in a um, playthrough with somebody, which is more than welcome to show people. We'll be playing this again on Thursday. Um, for this card again, I might want to be trying to chuck out a certain card, but ultimately what you're competing over depends on what goes on here. 
and maybe be conscious of what cards people are going for. If someone's picked up the Legionnaire card, they will want this card. It'll be cheap, so nobody else wants it, but someone's trying to try and compete. And in this instance, it's very cheap getting, uh, well, very expensive in a way, because you're only getting one coin, you're getting one. Instead of two, you're going to get six. So you're going to get seven coins, but you're still having to spend a card here and a card here and hope you get this card, one of those two cards, and hope to also get that. So you're juggling between playing a very high card, say here, and a very low card down here. Bearing in mind, you might need to also make sure you get the kind of card here too. Coming to the Colosseum, same thing. Um, I might want to go straight in with an eight because nobody can beat an eight unless they play an eight and they have a card which would insert in front of something else. It's like this. Now what I happen to do, play a one on that card and it leapfrogs somebody with an eight. Of course, a one cost me no points. So imagine I've taken all my cards, I've taken my thing, um, that card stays there, you move on to the next card, they take theirs, etc. Phase three, you then go through an order, some bids, and you can choose where you want to stick a card. So I'm going to stick, I don't know, a seven here. And it's because I went there because you have to have, you have to take one of your tickets that you've won. So this is Colosseum. So imagine I played, I don't know, the eight there. I'd have gone first, I'd have taken any card I liked, but I would have obviously taken the one with more points. Chucked it down here. Um, everyone else does that stuff, remember. Moving on to phase three, and I might go first because I've got the start playing card. And I go, yep, yeah, and I'm gonna place down a seven. Now, someone might have got this cheaply because it's only worth a two, and this might have been more up someone's bag. And then suddenly they would play an eight here instead, and they would grab this instead of me. But it's only a point difference, so I don't mind too much. So yes, it's very much about opportunity cost and trying to leverage that to say, well, am I spending more than I'm gaining or vice versa? And something to bear in mind is on round two, uh, what you do is you um, flip over three more cards and then basically of those cards, you're going to be chucking under a coin. So basically the last three cards that come up, you are going to be chucking under that. So that's worth more. So I say three, double check the comments later on, I might be amending that. But crucially around two and three, some things are gonna have some extra value. So you're more incentivized to maybe try and go for that. Now um, in round two, you can end up with it happening again. So basically for one of these colors, you're gonna be flipping it over, if I can find out where the tickets have gone. And it's gonna be everything in the red section in the Circus Maximus. That's it. After three rounds, you're seeing how many points So after each round. So in round one, imagine I've still got this left. I'll score one, two, three, four. I would have also gained, for example, I had the relevant stuff here, four, uh, five, six, seven, matching it with this one, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 in round one, everyone will tot up and you'll know what everyone else got. And then you're gonna do it over again in round two and three. Remembering you might still get these cards that you hadn't spent available as well. And that's basically the game. So um, yeah, it takes about 75 minutes. It takes a bit of space on the table, depending on how you choose to lay stuff out. But of course, a lot of this, to be honest, you can overlap. The only reason why you wouldn't overlap them is when you're moving cards back and forth to you know, double check where you're going. But considering most games take up you know, a fair amount of space on the table, I think this, um, should be absolutely fine for uh, for most tables. Just bear in mind that even though it's a card game, you know, it's just cards and that's it, um, you need to bear in mind that, yeah, it takes a bit more space than a classic other kind of card game that you might be familiar with. Uh, the way I tend to arrange the cards is just do them in um, ascending order. And yeah, there's not much in the way of a nice process. There's a bit of interaction in terms of what you're trying to go after trying to consider, do I want to go for, you know, um, that Legionnaire? Do I want to consider trying and competing with somebody for these? Because again, everything will have a competition going on. And it's like, well, do I choose to try and guarantee it or do I go cheap and hope nobody else wants it? So lots of different things to consider. Uh, the rating on Board Game Geek has been six when I viewed it, 6.0. I'd give it, I don't want to give it a seven. I feel like, I don't want to give it a six either though. I feel like it's somewhere in between. And I do like that Knizia-esque feel that you're kind of going up and you're going down and, 
you know, everyone has a positive score, put it that way. And um, because it's not a solvable game, but the fact that some people might find they would prefer, I don't know, I like the fact that the chance comes down to the fact of, you know, what it is that you're trying to go for. Is it the fact that you're competing in one person, not somebody else? The fact that you can, you know, change your strategy around based on your cards here. I think that's a nice way of doing it. The fact that you're having to consider, um, based on the cards that you grab here, what do you go for? I think it's quite standard that people um, tend to opt for a middling card for this top bit, somewhere between six and five. Of course, five is efficient because it's equivalent to a four, only costs you one coin. The downside is, of course, suddenly that's the inverse when you might be trying to grab a card. You won't go through all your cards in a single round. You might get through half of them. And again, whatever you hold on to, you're still getting points. But typically, I'd say you'll get more points if you can play out your cards. But there is a risk, of course, uh, of what you're going to do. But like I said, very nice artwork. I do like the um, like the cards. I like the shadows. I like the kind of standardization of the um, the the floor, the kind of the foreground. Seems very effective. And uh, nice bright colors. Like I said nice artwork. Very interesting bandages and stuff like that. Um, I think it's been well put together, and I do like the the way that these cards are laid out. Um, purple obviously doesn't help. Three to five means obviously you can't play as a two, but I think people have been considering variants as well. So that is something to um, seek out. Um, but nice sized cards, fits them well. Um, yeah, portable, and the tin does fit in pretty effectively. I tend to put... So the starting cards there, tickets go there. Money, as it's the second and third round, can go out to the side. Um, and yeah, adding a bit of incentive for those cards is also quite, quite cool too. So <clears throat> as for where you stick the starting cards, I might choose to do that. And then this should have enough space here. So remember, three player, you're taking out one of the things. Now, I could have actually packed this way differently, but it does work. Rule book works, you can get in English as well. And that is Circus Maximus with a tin. It does have a bit of weight to it. Um, interesting amount for tin, but as you can see, no dings, it's been to Germany and back. Um, 292. So thank you very much for watching. And if you like that, please support the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Like if you liked it and add the comments on YouTube. And finally, uh, videos normally uploaded evenings in the UK. So thank you very much and speak to you again soon. Bye bye.